Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. See, so I see a few people joining in. Tatai Mo, Hello Manless, Jolly Eskimo, and Big Walruses. Thanks, guys, for joining in at the very start. But yeah, as you guys can see from the stream title down below, I am building the Mech Wild Clunker. So yeah, a couple months ago, there was a board on Mech Wild called the Clunker going on sale. I talked about it in one of my group by news streams. Yeah, you guys can click on that link to learn more. Basically, it is a 40% board that looks like so. Um, but what's particularly unique about it is that not only does it have a rotary encoder, but it also has a, let's see, is this a better picture? There we go, yep, on that top right over there, that is a solenoid. So not only will it sound like a regular mechanical keyboard, but on every time that you press a switch, this um, solenoid will have a clack sound. It's, 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 it's not like a speaker, it's an actual mechanical device that, that makes the clack. This is what we'll be building tonight, and I'm very excited to build this. You know, I don't usually build um, too many THT boards, but this is this is amazing. This is amazing. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So once again, I've done some prep work. I've already put all all of the diodes on. This is probably the longest part of the build and I didn't want to bore everyone while I installed diodes. So I have all the diodes installed already. And I've also got the, I don't know what that is, but um, I've got the reset button, what looks to be a transistor, a resistor, and mostly everything soldered on, including the pins, or, or I guess these are the sockets for the Pro Micro. So tonight, all we really need to do is install switches, the solenoid, and the Pro Micro. MechWild is kind enough to provide a, a guide online. So we'll see, look at that. So we're just gonna go through all of this. Pretty much got most of the stuff installed. Let's see, step zero, flash your Pro Micro. I, I can do that later. Let's see, I've installed all that. I've installed the transistor. I've installed the Pro Micro pins. Yep, yep, yep. All that is good. Reset buttons also in. There we go. Flyback diode. There we go. I still don't know what it is other than it's a diode. The solenoid. There we go. Step six, solenoid. The most complicated step. Read through this entire step before cutting anything. First, we will be cutting the end of the wires off the solenoid so that we will have one to two inches of slack. Then, Tie the wires into a loose knot so it doesn't seem as long. Interesting. And you will need to strip the very ends of the wires, about a quarter inch or five millimeters or so, and tin the tips. Tinning the tips of the wires where you apply some solder to expose wire ends, so they are basically one solid piece instead of a bundle. Oh, I see what they're doing here. Here, if you guys haven't seen the solenoid, here it is. That should be six millimeters, not five millimeters. Ah, okay. There we go. Solenoid like this. I really wish you guys would have put like the header pins on it directly rather than having to to cut it and trim the wires and all that. I think I'll do the solenoid last just cause I don't want it to be like heavy when I'm picking up the board and all that. So we'll put the rotary encoder in first. There we go. Why is it not going in? There we go. We got it. Okay, I think we're good there. Turn on the soldering iron. Please pardon the fume extractor. There we go. Yeah, I think that's good. That is good. 
Okay, let's see. What is the next step here? So if you are using an encoder, put it on now. If not, wait until step 12. Absolutely use an encoder here. I don't see why anyone would just use like a regular switch. Yep. Put on the stabilizers. Yep, we got that on. That one switch that is in the way. Okay. One switch that is over where the Pro Micro is. Okay, we can put that in. Cool, cool, cool. In case you could, switches go through the switch plate, you could choose not to use the switch plate. Yep. See, do I want to use the switch plate? Um. No, I would like to buy a P3D case for this whenever those are available and. I believe those usually factor in the usage of a switch plate. So I'm going to build this with a switch plate. Let's see, Huynh says, use the switch plate. There we go. Okay, let's grab the switch plate. So we want to install that switch first. Oh yeah, so the switch choice for this board is since we are going for a very loud board you said we worked hard at it if you guys remember when i built or when i unboxed my id80 it came with these kale um switches which are very clicky i don't use clicky switches so i immediately took them off and put on gateron yellows or gateron ks9 2.0s in it so now i have a whole bag of clickies which i was like i have no idea where i'm ever gonna use this and then this guy came in the mail and i was like aha the perfect board to use this on. This is gonna be a loud board. This is the board I will bring to work when I'm mad at my coworkers. Oh, that guy didn't really go go in. Very diff definition of passive aggressiveness in the workplace. Oh yeah, for sure. It is probably the only clicky board, or this is probably the second clicky board that I've ever built on stream. The first one I built was my Saturn 60 actually. Please let us know the reception of Solenoid at work is. Um, you guys probably won't know for I don't know, maybe an indefinite amount of time since I work from home most days. Like, sometimes I go into work, but I have my own office, so it's like, you know, doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, I solder on the switch, labeled important. Okay. Let us solder in the switch. Did I ever build the Mercutio? Yes, I did. All right, it's all the important ones are in. All right, this one's an interesting bit. The direction of the Pro Micro matters here goes on the bottom of the PCB with the components also facing the PCB, so upwards, okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, let's do it. Let's solder in this this guy first, the one that's supposed to get in the way. Then we'll solder in a bunch of the other ones. All right. Pardon my fume extractor. Okay, there we go. Got the Pro Micro in. Did all the pins make it? Yeah. 
Okay. The ordeal is over. Hooray. Okay. Looks good. Pro Michael soldered on. Now we get to put on the rest of the switches. And then we'll save the solenoid for last because it's the most difficult according to this guide. Okay. I'm just gonna solder in the rest of these really quick just so I can hold the plate up. thumbs are a bit tired there. I will leave him out for now and solder in the rest. Pardon the fume extractor. Okay, I have most of the switches soldered, that's good. Let's put in that bottom row. So the bottom row, no matter what board I'm on, I'm always so confused about. So I always have to use like keycaps to do it. Here, let's just put this top one on first. And we'll be good. There we go. Yeah, let's just solder that one really quick. Just so I can fully focus and just the bottom row. Okay, perfect. All right, bottom row. So the way I'm gonna do this is the, the left space bar will be the shorter 2.25U and the right space bar will be the 2.75U simply because I am a right thumb user when it comes to space bars. I like to hit like right between the N and the M. So if I could get that side longer, then I think I, there's like the likelihood of using this board will also be higher. That is an obnoxious sound, which is just perfect. Oh my. Okay. Let's figure out what goes where. What goes where? Let's start with the Alt key. This guy goes right there. I'm gonna go with the 1.25U flanking the space bars. 1.25U all across. I just think that's the more aesthetically pleasing out of the bunch.
There you go. It seemed right. Yep, that does. That's not sitting all the way in. It's odd. Let's try it out again. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So once we have all these switches in, we're actually going to test the keyboard really quick first. So we want to see if it at least types, right? And then we'll put in the solenoid. And once we put in the solenoid, it's going to be glorious. All right, we have the board done gonna plug it in just to see if I if it types anything really quick. Well, it lights up. But does it type? That is the bigger question. Yes it does. It types. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right, time to, here, let me do a little bit of cleanup first, and then we can continue with the solenoid. By cleanup, I mean cleaning up the solder, the, the flux on the PCB really quick. I'm gonna argue that on THT boards like this, it's actually more more important to clean your PCB afterwards because it's kind of exposed. A lot of other boards are contained within the chassis. So I like to think there's more protection there, but something like this where it's also like a layered case, it's exposed to the elements. It's better to clean it off like this as best as you can. We're good. Then why are you toothbrushing it? Um, after soldering a board, sometimes you leave some flux residue and over time flux residue can cause your board to oxidize. So it, it's not a, it's, it's more of a problem if you are in a very um, dry climate of, of sorts, you know? So this, this is just like fit and finish always recommended and earlier i mentioned that since this is a stacked board it's not like contained within the chassis it's more exposed to, to the elements you know so we got to clean it and make sure not, none of that ever happens let's see let me just scroll to that part of the build guide it's actually at the very beginning of the build guide just kind of bypassed it because i wanted to get everything else in here we go here we go this is it Step six, the most complicated step. Read through this entire step before cutting anything. I did read it earlier, but we'll read it again. Eight, 
in a loose knot. Okay, we'll tie it in a loose knot of sorts. Maybe we'll cut, a, cut off the end. Yeah, so the guide was saying that we could solder this so that it would be one one single strand. But I find that, at least earlier when I was trying to solder it, the strands kept separating, so it made it more difficult. So what I'm doing is I'm just twirling the, st the strands together so it becomes a single point. That way it's easier to put it through the hole. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Guess Mechwald wasn't kidding when they said this was the most. Oh, I just got it. I just got it. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, Mechwald wasn't kidding about this. This was definitely the most annoying step. But I'm glad that I finally got it. There we go. Okay, we got it. We got it. Yeah, I definitely have a little bit too much cable there, but oh well, it is what it is. All right, let's test it out again. Let's make sure that the solenoid works. I think it should be enabled by default, but here we go, let's do it. Oh, you... I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but here, we're gonna do it on the space bar. Oh yeah! Wow, I think the solenoid is so loud that it's, drown it's, it's drowning out the click. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Yeah, just the one thing about sandwich boards that are just so difficult. First time chat, from Technic TTV so it sounds like the monkey type typewriter sound effect. Oh, well, a solenoid might be what they are mimicking. See, I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be the long one, right? Yeah, that's the long one. Imagine if that was tapping on a heavy metal case like old Model Fs. Oh, for sure. For sure. Let's see, where are all the screws for that? Okay. All right, I get it. I get it.
That might be a little too long. Let's not do that one. Let's do the short screws. Short screws. And last but not the least. There we go. We got it. Okay. Let's put the rest of the keycaps on, or rather, let's put on the feet first. What switches have recently gotten my attention lately? I just got sent some new switches from Canon Keys. I got sent the Heartbeat ones, the Whisper ones, um, some Aquamarines. And yeah, and I got another thing from the Vinikis earlier, so we'll see what those are like as well. But so far, out of, out of the new switches I've tried, I really like the um, Aquamarines and the and the Whisper switches. The Heartbeat ones I wasn't too happy with, unfortunately. Okay. Put the rest of these extra hardware in, in its place, and then we'll put the rest of the keycaps on. So the keycaps that I'm putting on this is nice PBT Morse code. I figured Morse code and a clicky and solenoid driven board is going to be a good match thematically. There we go, let's start putting them on. that. So yeah, very uh, GMK carbon-like set, but instead of the regular um, Latin alphabet, it's just all, all Morse code. This could be a gateway to learning Morse code. Well, yeah, I, I guess I could learn Morse code, but you know, I never had to use it, right? That's not to say that I might never need to use it, but it's kind of one of those skill sets that you're not sure if you would ever use, right? Okay, we need to fill out those last two keys. So, I don't even know the... Oh my god. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't even know how this is programmed, but let, let's try. Let's try. Okay. There we go. Whew. Okay, let's try let's try a typing test here. Yeah, you can actually hear like the click as well. Like the um, solenoid seems to hit like the lower end, and then the click hits like the higher end. So it like covers like the full spectrum. There, let's just do a short one because I'm not really. Let's see. Let's 
the J. Okay, that's what I thought it would be. Okay, good luck. Here we go, let's do this. Oh my gosh, this is insane. This is so weird. Reverse ASMR. <laughs> Let's see. Sounds like a taser. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Wow, wow, okay. Um, I'm so happy that I built this board, but I don't know how often I'll be using it. It's a little too rattly for my taste. Kind of expected that, to be honest. But yeah, maybe I'll just keep this on my, on, on my desk indefinitely, just so I could like show people whenever I'm streaming. I might program some of these keys to be like, you know, like for my group by news segment. I'd be like, all right, so the first uh, group by is, you know, we'll see. Oops. We'll see what I do. Oh, interesting. So when you hold a key down, it doesn't trigger it. Do that. Okay, let's, let's go type something with. See, so when I hold on backspace, it does trigger backspace, but it doesn't keep the solenoid going. One fat loud macro pad for sure. I really like it too. Oh, interesting. So you can hold another key down. It does. It does um, react to NKRO, see, so I'm holding down delete and it's actually deleting what I type, but I can also type something else, which is which is triggering it, so, that, so that's good. So this is the other quote unquote loud board, except I purposely made this have, have like good switches, because I love how this sounds. See, so this is as loud as this one gets. This one's using like a piezo speaker. And and the speaker can't actually keep up with my typing. So I need to slow down to like 80 words per minute. It's not even like a really loud beep, unlike this. But I'd love for something to like have both a solenoid, a beeper, and clicky switches. That would be like a super loud board. This build would have taken a whole lot longer than it did. It took about two hours right now. It's a lot faster than what it would normally take simply because I already pre-did the board. I put all the diodes on. I put all of the other components on as well. All we really had to do was put on switches and the Pro Micro. So yeah, definitely would have been a four hour build. Bought this board for the meme factor. I am under no uh, preconceptions that this is a amazing board, but I bought it simply because you hardly ever see a board with a solenoid. So I just had to buy this. Yeah, if you guys are interested in buying it, it's on mechwell.com. I believe they will have extras fairly soon. This is a sub $50 board. Of course, you have to buy your own switches and whatnot. But Pro Micro, Solenoid, everything else is provided for you. But yeah, typing on this board, uh, I'm not a big 40% person, so it would take some getting used to. I, I guess I could tolerate the clicky, but if you pair it along with this, this is gonna be unbearable. This is gonna be crazy. Yeah, I don't think I have any other board here that, that's a lot than this. This is crazy loud. I bet you could hear this from like, I bet my neighbors could hear this actually. It's that loud. But yeah, anyway, um, I will be using this board 
Maybe not extensively, but it will make several appearances on this channel. Um, you'll most likely see it tomorrow during tomorrow's 7.30 p.m. group by new stream. Um, I'll try not to use it that much because it can get distracting. But yeah, fun little board to type on. Um, I will have to reprogram it so I can turn off the solenoid. Or I'm pretty sure that the default key map has a way to turn it off, but I just want to be, be able to turn it off quick because that can be so annoying. So yeah, um, thanks guys for joining in. Um, next stream is tomorrow evening, 7.30 p.m. So hope you guys have a good rest of your Saturday or early Sunday morning. And I will see you when I see you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.